let's talk about the programmable nature of human beings. Our minds can be programmed. We are programmable, like a computer. We are not computers. It's not to say that we are equivalent to computers, but we are like a computer in the sense that we, we can be programmed. And the programming can basically consist of beliefs or belief systems, thought patterns, and habits, among others. How are we programmed? We're programmed through archetypal symbols and language. These are two of the main ways that we are programmed. Most people understand language, but maybe symbols are under less understood. As students and initiates of occult knowledge, we go deep into symbology and we start to understand that there are archetypal symbols that we all understand at a very ba basic level in our consciousness, even when our conscious mind isn't aware of them. And we start to pay more attention to those symbols and their meaning. Violence and trauma increase our susceptibility to programming. If you've ever experienced violence, if you've ever experienced trauma and observed how it changed your own behavior, then you probably have a firsthand recognition of this. But we can see it very clearly through the pattern of history and through the behavior of others. And in order to get by in life, our programming informs our behavior to a great extent. Some, some researchers have claimed or have stated that it could be well over 90% of our behaviors are automated by some kind of programming in our subconscious. And that may or may not be true. I'm, I would certainly think that it would be at least 75 to 80%, certainly more in certain circumstances because our conscious mind would be overwhelmed if we had to consciously act upon everything in our environment. Now, one of the interesting aspects is that programs can be added or removed. So we can be deprogrammed. You've probably heard of this. Someone who leaves a cult, you may have heard about deprogramming from a cult or, or coming out of a religion. That's exactly what's happening. Removing habits is also a form of deprogramming or reprogramming. It's also really, really important to understand that young children are the most susceptible to external programming. They are the most susceptible. And as stewards of the children, we have a moral duty to protect them, something that we haven't been doing, unfortunately. And the dark occultists, they know this, and they particularly target children, especially under the age of five. It turns out that we can be programmed to be predominantly good and we can pr be programmed to be pr predominantly evil. And this is part of, part of, explains partly why some people think people are good because some people are and others are evil because we can be programmed either way or within the range of that. We also have the ability to accept or reject programming based on our free will based on our consciousness. When we become consciously aware of, first of all, the fact that we are programmable, but then the programs themselves, then we start to intercede consciously on our own behalf, on the behalf of others, of our children, and we start to accept or reject the programming accordingly. Now, programming has many benefits. It's, it's not only a negative thing. It's not, it's uh, like almost any concept in reality, there is a positive and negative interpretation. So on the positive side, beneficial programming allows us to cultivate self-esteem and self-worth. It allows us to activate higher levels of consciousness and higher faculties such as willpower and courage. It's the backbone of allowing us to achieve big goals and act with purpose. It's what allows us to learn and acquire new knowledge and skills. We can actually design ourselves. We can design our personality. We can create our state of being, our, our, the, the, the immediate circumstances that we find ourselves in. We get to master complex skills and abilities, like piloting a plane, like driving a car, or perform, performing music managing complex organizations. Imagine having to 
pilot a plane or even drive a car, something that probably almost certainly you've done in your life. And imagine having to be consciously aware, just like you were when you learned how to drive all the time. Be overwhelming. It would be infeasible for you to do that. It would be exhausting. So programming has a good side. It allows us to imprint on our minds, on our subconscious, things that allow us to operate in ways that we wouldn't be able to if we weren't able to do that. And that allows us to, for example, drive while having sometimes very deep and uh, deep thoughts and maybe even about completely unrelated subjects. Of course, there is a dark side to programming. And if we're going to take on this knowledge and really understand that we need to see both sides. The dark side of programming is very active in the world today and we can see it manifested in many things. Television is one of the best examples of programming. In fact, it's called television programming for a reason. Television is tell a vision because what it's doing is it's telling us here's how you should see the world. Here should, here's what your vision of reality should be. Tell a vision. Hypnosis. Hypnosis can be used for good, but it can be used to insert knowledge, gnosis, and behaviors and resulting behaviors under knowledge, hypognosis, meaning it's put in subconsciously below the conscious awareness. Again, that can be used for good, but it can also be used manipulatively. Public school education, in quotes, because it's really nothing of the kind. It's really indoctrination. And it's specifically programming. It's specifically designed to program obedience in authority. Obedience to authority. That is the purpose of that indoctrination. We've already talked about pop culture, and pop culture programs us in many different ways and to have many different thoughts and beliefs through the different media, film, television, and music, among others. Not to mention the mainstream news. And we can thank those who are lying for a paycheck every single day as they show up to tell us a vision in the mainstream media news. We can talk about manipulation of language. I'm going to say the following words and I want you to notice how they affect you. Everybody will be different, but everybody will be affected some way or another by these words. Conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theorist. Terrorist. Racism. Nigger. Slavery. Holocaust. Anti-Semitism. Just take a minute to notice how those words affected you and you'll have some insights into how they're being used to program you to think certain ways and to behave in certain ways and that's the mind control religion religion is likely the oldest and most common way of programming and in fact the dark occultists themselves are religionists they have a religion of their own the famous researcher Bill Cooper called it Mystery Babylon. It's been called the old religion. It's been called Satanism, dark Luciferianism, and other names. But religions in general, even the astrotheological religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are also forms of religion. And there are modern forms of religion as well. The belief in authority is a religion. Religion comes from the Latin religare. The ver it's a verb, it's a compound verb that's composed of a prefix, re, with a verb antecedent, ligare. Ligare means to tie or to bind. And when you combine it with re, it means to tie back, to bind tightly, or to thwart from forward progress. Essentially, religion is a box for consciousness. And what that means is it creates a limiter that says you're allowed to think within these boundaries. You're allowed to think and believe these things, but anything outside of that, you don't go there. That's religion. 
Sexual ritual abuse, which is part of the dark occult, particularly in childhood, is a way to induce trauma. Remember, we talked about trauma as a facilitator of programming. And this is done ritualistically because when you can fracture the consciousness of an individual and start to create what are called alters, you can literally program people to have different personalities that don't even know about each other. And that's because the mind, when it is deeply traumatized, will, will isolate, will wall off the traumatic memories. So in the extreme, it starts to create alters. This is a very well-documented process. And if you want to look more into it, I encourage you to look into the works of Jay Parker, Kathy O'Brien, Catherine Waters, and Fritz Springmeier, among, among others. Chaos sorcery is a, another form of dark programming that happens on a massive scale. This is when a massive ritual is performed that is designed to principally put a large number of people into a state of fear so that they will become more compliant and more obedient as they attempt to feel safe again. 9-11 is probably the most well-known example of chaos sorcery in recent times, but any false flag event, any engineer, socially engineered event or occurrence could be potentially chaos sorcery. The pandemic, scamdemic of the last three years or so was also a form of chaos sorcery of a different kind. Actually, is several different types of chaos sorcery, uh, but unlike September 11th, it didn't all happen in one day, uh, but it actually it happened over a longer period of time. And school shootings, mass shootings, particularly in the United States, which is practically the only country where these events occur, that should give you a clue to the fact that they are engineered, is another example of dark programming. Again, to put people into fear and to get them to believe certain things so they act and behave in a certain way. So what are the effects of mind control? Mind control is, is the term referring to external programming for the purposes of controlling the behavior of an individual. So what mind control is actually doing is it's placing the mind and the brain in a state of imbalance, usually pushing it towards left brain or right brain, brain dominance. And this chart on the left, which comes from Mark Passio's work, is a good example of this. And it creates certain behaviors on either side. And the dark occultists, they want, they need both for their systems, for their schemes to be successful. They need certain people to act like slaves, and they that would be the right brain dominance. And they need certain people to act like masters, that's the left brain dominance. And if you were to take a PET scan or a scan of someone's, the brain activity of an individual who is experiencing this balance, you would literally see darkened areas in the affected part of their brain. It is an actual physical disease. It is a often reversible disease, but it is a physically manifested disease. This can lead to low self-esteem, low self-worth, a failure to stand up for yourself. This is a big aspect of why the world is the way it is, because most people are afraid or lack the courage or the backbone to stand up for themselves and their value. It also leads on the master side to the willingness to inflict violence without thinking about the consequences. It leads to limiting and false beliefs. It leads to the belief in and the acceptance of all forms of external authority, including in particular government and the enforcement of government through policing, through the military. It leads also to mental laziness, even an unwillingness to learn and take on important new knowledge, such as what I'm sharing in today's presentation. Many people won't, will not even have made it this far in this presentation because of that mental laziness. Think about that. It leads to anxiety and depression. See, anxiety and depression, they're not just random. They're not just because someone's born with a tendency. They are effects of a cause. They are symptoms of a problem. And while it's not the only reason, mind control can often lead to increased anxiety and depression. And it leads to people being easily controllable and triggered 
We've talked about triggering again. Think about those words that I recited in the last slide. But think about how easily someone who is deeply programmed, how they could be triggered and controlled to behave in any number of different ways. Talking about programming and how that's played out in my own life. I did not have parental oversight and guidance during the crucial times of my mental development as a young child definitively and this has consequences my parents did not help me to gain conscious control of my mind and to program me in a way that was going to optimize my ability to learn and grow to be moral and to contribute positively not only in my own life but to the world as a consequence of that i never developed a moral filter a behavioral filter things were very haphazard and we could say that the chaos that we see in the world around us, I had mental chaos in my own mind as a result of that. Fortunately, through a series of events, I made the conscious choice to stop watching television in 2004, almost 20 years ago, but not before I had spent more than half of my life watching television. Although I did start making better choices and con more conscious decisions moving forward, and specifically on what I was going to put into my own mind. This later led me to quit bad habits like smoking just through activating my will. And then I was also able to deprogram myself from all religion, including and most notably the belief in authority, the belief that someone can actually or does have the right to rule through violence. Now, in the present, I am a sovereign of my own mind and I control largely my programming, the programming that I allow in my mind to a much greater extent than any time in my life. I am not completely immune to external influence, just like you are not and nobody is because we live in a world where there are still a lot of external programming, harmful programming. So we can never completely escape it as long as it exists. All we can do is minimize our exposure to it by bringing more conscious awareness to it and by co making better conscious choices. Now I want to share with you a homework ass assignment related to programmability so you can deepen your understanding of this aspect of human nature. What I'd like to invite you to do is to sit down and write out several of your beliefs and, and habits, things that you've taken on. Once you've written them down, I'd like you for each of them to go back and see if you can determine where this belief came from. Where did this come from? How did you take this on as a belief? Did you always believe this or did you start believing this at some point in your life? And if it was the latter, how and why? I also want you to examine each belief more closely and ask yourself a few very powerful and important questions about it. Does this belief serve you? Does this habit serve you? Does it serve others and the world around you? Is it perhaps harmful to you personally? Can it lead to harm to others? Is it limiting you? Is it holding you back? Is it constraining your infinite potential? Now, as you go through this exercise, always being honest with yourself, for any beliefs or habits that you discover that you know are objectively wrong, you know they're causing harm, whether to yourself or others or both, I want you to make the conscious decision to remove those beliefs, to replace those habits with their beneficial complement. I also want to invite you to make an effort to actively remove any sources of programming that you deem negative, that you have identified. Television, certain people that you're spending time with that are filling your minds with poison, and so forth. Anything that's reinforcing or repeating these undesirable thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors, I want you to start to distance yourself. Consider distancing yourself from them and see how that could benefit you. Make conscious choices to do that. and. Even if you're not able to make all the changes at once, 
just commit to making the changes that you can make. Do the best that you can. And then after making changes, continue to examine the consequences of those changes and the benefits that you may experience in your life as a result of making those changes.